Hey guys, it's Dan from Conspiracy to Christ, and today I wanted to do a video on Christian metal music. Now the video you're watching at the moment is actually a video of me drumming a few years ago, before I got saved. Um, I've been into heavy music, I've been into drumming since I was 14 years old. Now since walking with Christ, I've kind of figured that a lot of the music that I used to listen to has got very dark, very cult and satanic lyrics and overtones. So I've kind of been on a quest to find Christian music where the lyrics glorify God. You know, lots of metal bands can call themselves Christian, but at the end of the day, if their lyrics aren't glorifying God and how they live their life is not glorifying God, then they're just another secular band. So today we're going to look at a couple of bands. One is As I Lay Dying, and one is for today. Now one of these bands is obviously nowhere near a Christian band and the other band, well the singer of For Today, Matty Montgomery, is completely on fire for God. He preaches the word on stage, he's got his own preaching albums, he's not afraid to be bold for Christ. So let's get into it. Now the first band that we're going to look at is a band called As I Lay Dying. Now I actually haven't really listened to this band much. Um, it was just interesting because a few months ago in the news I heard about the lead singer. He got into a bit of strife in his personal life. And it all came out that this band were basically just selling out, pretending to be a Christian metal band. Now I don't know what they were like at the start. But what this is all about, if you are going to claim to be a Christian metal band, don't be fake. You will know them by their fruits. So all you have to do is look at the images these bands are putting out, look at what they're portraying, look at the lyrics of their songs, and look at the actions of the band members. I mean, straight off the bat here, I can see this guy's t-shirt here, with the upside down Illuminati pyramid. I mean, if you were really a Christian artist, would you have, you know, would you be wearing stuff like that? Would you have tattoos of demons? Now, I know that you may have got those before you got saved, but, you know, you can choose what messages you're putting out to the kids. And then when we go to look at their album covers and a lot of their promo material, it is just saturated with death and skulls. I mean, every single T-shirt design, album cover, it's just skulls. If you're glorifying God, why you, why do you look like every other, you know, satanic band, basically? Why do you use the same imagery as all the other bands? So it's very interesting. You shall know them by their fruit. If we look at Matthew chapter 7, a tree and its fruit, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenly wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do man gather grapes, or figs, or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, let's check out the fruits of the front man of this band, As I Lay Dying. Christian heavy metal singer sentenced to prison after murder for hire plot admits he's an atheist and lied about faith to sell records. He told a man at the gym that she was making it hard to see their three adopted children and finalise the divorce. So down here you can see that this guy was caught asking a trainer at his gym if he knew anyone who could kill his estranged wife. This is not really Christian, you know, I, I don't think, if you're trying to pay someone to off your wife. California confessed he described himself to fans as not a Satanist in order to avoid saying he was an atheist. 
you shall know them by their fruit. Truthfully, I was an atheist. The strategy I had at the time was cowardly. Two of the songs on that record were about coming to grips with the idea that life has no purpose, no meaning. He said some of his band members and many other Christians bands share his views. He said the charade became awkward. When kids would want to pray with us after shows, I'd be like, um, go away and pray. I would just let them pray. I'd say, amen. If praying while I have my hand on their shoulder makes them feel better, I didn't want to take that away from them, he confessed. When they would specifically ask me to pray for them, I'd say something like, I don't really like to pray out loud, but I'll take that with me to the bus. Fake. All over him. Fake Christian. He's not bold for Christ. He's just doing it for album sales. And then, well, his works came out into the public. And now this guy's been sentenced to prison for trying to kill his wife. James chapter 2. What doth it profit, my brethren, that a man say he has faith and have not works? Can save faith him? Sorry, can faith save him? No, it can't. Even so, faith, if he has not works, is dead, being alone. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And now Tim Lamesis from As I Lay Dying, not really on a Christian path in his life, when he's getting sentenced to jail for wanting to murder his wife. So enough of this dark stuff. Let's look at a band that's really proclaiming God on stage, in their albums, and just genuinely across the board. Let's have a look at For Today. Now, when I was on the search for some good Christian heavy music, actually my brother in the Christian Truth and Network, Andrew, uh, mentioned the band For Today. And as soon as I saw that stuff, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Finally, I can see a band that, you know, has got decent lyrics, but is still heavy and something that I'm into. So I'm going to show you some of uh, For Today's lyrics. We're going to look at some of the onstage preaching that Matty Montgomery, the frontman, does for For Today. And what's so great about him is that uh, he's so bold, like he's not afraid to go to Warp Tour where it's just not his fans, but fans that are into all of the secular music, and he's not scared at all to preach to those fans. Uh, God is really using him in a great way to reach these kids that are lost that are into all of this heavy music where it's so easily for them to get taken uh, by the devil. And at the end, we'll look into some of his ministry because he actually has preaching albums. Uh, he's got a website and he is very active outside of this band. So it's not like he just enjoys the tour lifestyle, playing on stage, you know, loves being famous. This guy is on fire for God and he works to save souls. And that's what it's all about. So let's do it. Let's look at some of the lyrics of this band. Now this is off their Portraits album, which is uh, a few years old now. But let's just look at some of the lyrics of this song, Emmanuel. I mean, they're awesome. You're not alone, my son. I made you for so much more than this. Don't be afraid, my child, for I have overcome the world. Go tell the world that I would die for them to know me, and I would die for them to live. And this is life, that they would know you, God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This is life, child. I'll give you everything. You can stand tall, for there is life in me. Now let, let the blood I shed be just enough for you to know that you will always have a home with me. No, you will not be abandoned. All hell will not stand against us, for only those who choose to die will claim the life that I have for them. So now the question stands. Would you die? Would you die for me? Would you die? Would you die for me? Can you hear it? Can you hear my voice? I've been calling you since the day you were born to come home. To come home to the place I've prepared for you. You're not alone. Wow, I actually haven't read these lyrics before. And that last line, I've been calling you since the day you were born to come home. That's exactly how my life has been. 
I've always known about God, and he, he, I felt him calling me my whole life, but I just, I didn't believe it. I just went back into the world. And it got to the point where the calling was so full on on my heart and on my soul that I couldn't deny it anymore. It was, God, Jesus was basically screaming in my face saying, Daniel, this is the time. We are in the end days and you need to wake up people fast. And that's why I laid down my life for him. But let's continue. Perhaps one of the greatest mysteries surrounding the character of Christ is his willingness and desperation to partner with us. He was God in the flesh, the complete manifestation of goodness and love. And yet, he not only lived to bring people into partnership with himself, he died to make it a possibility. In the pursuit of the deepest, most eternal desires of your heart, believe this one powerful truth. You are not alone. I mean, you can't get better Christian lyrics than that, basically. We'll go on to one of their... This is off their latest album. Now, I do have to say that their their new stuff, the lyrics aren't as bold as that. And I do really I do really love these lyrics to Manuel. I wish all their songs had similar lyrics. The things with the new songs is the lyrics are a little bit more secular, but you know, they they're still they're still talking about it. He took my place and saved my life. And they're not scared to put Bible verses in the songs and stuff like that. But I have noticed as they get more popular and probably because they've signed to a new record label, they kind of have to do a little bit of a trade-off. I think it's just because they, the record label wants this band to sell more albums. So they have to find a fine balance between preaching God but still having music that will appeal to the secular audience. But I think what this band has figured and what Matty Montgomery, the front man, has figured that if I can attract many people to come to my concerts, even if they're kids that aren't Christian, if I get a chance to preach to them, then maybe I can convert them. So let's have a look at Matty preaching at Warp Tour, tour to not just fans of his band, but kids that are into all kinds of music. So how many of you have heard of today before? Oh, that is insane. Thank you guys so much for coming out here. You guys are awesome. Who's excited to be a Warped Tour 2012 today? Yes, yes, yes. Listen, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor to be standing here on this stage. It's a privilege and a blessing and a dream come true to be standing here on this stage. And it's, and it's funny because I thought, <laughs> I thought that maybe if I got famous or maybe if I got rich that I would be satisfied. I thought, I thought that maybe if everybody knew who I was or if I could stand in a place like this and would see thousands of people singing lyrics I wrote, that maybe then I would feel satisfied. Maybe then I would feel fulfilled and complete. And it turns out, it turns out that if you knew what I know, you would know that there was nothing in the world that could ever satisfy you. No relationship, no amount of money, no amount of respect or fame. truly satisfies is the knowledge of the God that made you through his precious son, Jesus Christ. So listen, I think we get slapped uh, with this label of being like an uplifting, positive band or whatever. And listen, I'm not, I'm not coming here to make everybody feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I'm not your mom. I'm not your therapist. I come here saying that I don't care what it is you're trying to fill yourself with. I don't care how many guys think your Facebook picture is sexy. I don't care how many... Huh? Oh, that, that hit home, right? Listen to me, I don't, I don't care how many girls you've slept with. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care how much swag you think you have. You are nothing without the knowledge of the God that made you through his son, Jesus Christ. But the reality of our situation is this, is that our sin, our imperfection, our self-centeredness, our pride, our egocentrism has separated us from the God that made us. And every single one of us, everyone on this stage included, deserves an eternity in hell. And that, that 
wasn't something we could fix. There wasn't a price we could even hope to pay. And so God in his incredible love, his incredible mercy and compassion, sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and our place to step in and take the wrath that you and I deserve. So listen, I'm not calling you to join my club. I'm not calling you to become a fan of my band. I'm calling you to lay everything down at the cross of Jesus Christ that you might obtain a greater resurrection, that you might step into a glory that far surpasses anything you could have ever asked, thought, or imagined. So I call every single one of you out and I say, quit living in half as much as you were supposed to. Quit living in partial destiny because Jesus went all the way to the grave so that you can come all the way into the life God called you into. Amen, Maddie. I mean, I know what he can talk about, about not being able to fill that hole inside you, because I tried for so many years trying to fill it with drugs and alcohol and girls and sex and cars and money and work, but it never fills that hole. So we'll go on and we'll see some of uh, Maddie's ministry. You can check out his website, uh, maddiemontgomery.com. The band is for today. Check out his preaching stuff. I mean, this guy inspires me. If I, if I, you know, at the moment I'm not sure to do what to do with my band really because they're not a Christian band. But if I get back into music, this is the stuff that I'm about. This is the message that needs to get out to save kids these days. and you will know them by their fruit. Guys, I love my metal, my hard rock, my hardcore music. But the thing is, if you are listening to this stuff, and it is taking your mind and your spirit away from God, you need to cast that stuff into the pit. You need to get rid of that stuff. For today's probably the only band I listen to at the moment because I know that their heart is on God and their lyrics are on God. So get rid of all that secular music and find some stuff that really is passionate and really inspires you. This is for all the bands that stand for truth and stand for the knowledge that Jesus Christ died on the cross and saved our lives. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> 